All right, um, I want to do this one, even though it's pretty easy. Our assignment is to, um, you know, check if somebody's <clears throat> tall enough and old enough to ride a roller coaster. Um, so basically, you're going to scan, you got your scanner working here, and then we can prompt them for how tall are you, right? Uh, let me pause while I do that so I don't waste a lot of time. All right, so just to get it going, we got to do a print with a prompt. And then remember, when you when you want to get some input from someone, you do like next int or next double or something like that. So we need to prompt them for their height. And then right here, we can also prompt them for how old are you. And then we'll just store it as a different uh, variable. Okay, so now that you prompt them, there's basically two ways to do it. You could do it kind of the way we did from uh, the three, two, three, 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 four with if else's. You could say if you are greater than or equal to 42 inches, then inside that if you could write another if else, and you can say if you are also nine years old. But the point of this section is to be able to use our new symbols, which are and and not. So we can just do this in one if statement. So if height is greater than or equal to 42, we don't have to do like nested if loops. We can just say, use our little and operator, and age is at least nine years old, so greater than or equal to nine. Then we're gonna say, you know, welcome aboard. Um, board all right um, and else because that's going to take care of if you're both if you're if you're missing one of them it'll toss you into this else uh, which is sorry or sorry Let's steal this system out print because I don't feel like typing it again if you're Canadian you say sorry um, you are not eligible to ride. All right, let's just say it without exclaiming. Okay, so, uh, oops. Well, so apparently um, I can't type, and uh, I didn't like when I said how old are you in inch or how tall are you in inches. Apparently, it uh, I'm just supposed to know that, and uh, it denied my code. So I changed that, and I also couldn't spell eligible. So those are a couple errors. But anyway, <clears throat> if you ran your code, you'd see it throw out those errors. So that was a pretty easy one. But I wanted to show the and and. Um, you could have done this one with two nested ifs, but it's way quicker just to make your ands do the dirty work of checking two conditions at once. All right, let's move on to a different one. When I go to number two, I notice I just kind of solved that problem because why would I do it a longer way if there's a more elegant way? So forget that. Um, I guess they wanted you to do it the slow way on on the first exercise, point, point six. but all right. We can deal with that. All right, so on this one, I think a couple things that might help you out. I think this problem's not that hard to set up because it's pretty clear on what you're typing in and what you're entering. So as long as you're getting these, <clears throat> um, you can do this the easy way or you can do this the hard way. But one sneaky thing is you need to short circuit and prevent someone dividing by zero because if you divide by zero the world ends so you want to make sure that you know when you're doing your conditions for your if statement the first condition makes sure that the divisor is not equal to zero because otherwise you got a short circuit to that um, the other thing i want to remind you of is modulo because if you don't use modulo, it's a really irritating way to have to do this problem. But if you use modulo, you can be like, I hope their answer key is accepting of this, but you know, and their whatever algorithm they use to check 
But like if I used three modulo, um, well actually five modulo three would equal two, right? Um, because that's the remainder after you divide five by three. Or um, if I do five, or if I do 20 modulo five, you're gonna get zero. Okay, you can mess around with modulo, so you wanna make sure you're, it's really easy to check if things are divisible or not using modulo. Um, and then you also need to include a protection measure so you don't uh, divide by zero. Because if you let somebody, if you just use modulo and didn't put any protection in there, if somebody did that, you would crash the system with an error. So you basically got to protect people from their own, you know, wrongdoings and don't let them do that. So use an and statement in Java and uh, use modulo and you should be able to kill this thing. All right. So let's check out the last one. Okay, so for this last one, you're going to try to find the minimum. So I'm sure you can print, or you can enter or prompt them to enter first integer. I think you'll have to use a new line character to make it show up on the next line. Uh, no, you don't. No, you don't. You just have to do your next int. So they're going to enter three integers, and then you're going to have to find the minimum. And since this is the section, and you're going to print out the minimum, since this is the section about using and or or and stuff like that, um, you're going to have to do ifs and else ifs to kind of make your um, hierarchy go. Um, but you could do this all with else ifs. You could say if the first is less than, you know, the second or the third, um, or second and the third, then the first is the minimum. Else if, you know, you could do, um, and you want to use less than or equal to because you could have multiple minimums. You could say like if you had a 5, a 5, and an 8, then 5 is the minimum. So you want to be careful that you use less than or equal to is so not strictly less than. But yeah, you're going to basically want to structure your if. Um, and then you can use else ifs after that. and an else at the end. So you, you don't have to do a ton because you I probably could do it in three because either you want to have the code here to check if the first guy is the minimum, right? So if first is less than or equal to uh, second, imagine I already prompted them, and first is also smaller than um, or equal to the third, then I would say, you know, my minimum is going to be the first. So you're going to have to, you know, print out the first one. And then in else if, what you got to remember about else if, you don't have to go as crazy on the next ones because it only reaches this line of code if you already know the first thing is not true. So you already know that the first is not your minimum. Because if your first was a minimum, it would have caught it here. It would have to be less than or equal to the second and less than or equal to the third. So when you get to this line here, you can check, like this one, this part can check for, you know, if the first is the minimum, right? Here, this one, you check if the second is minimum, but you already know that first is not. So, you know, you can you can save yourself a little work in the uh, top part there, or in your Boolean, because at this point, either your second or your third is... Um, is going to be the min. So that leaves the last one. Well, the third must be the min. If it reaches this part of your code, you already know the first wasn't. You already know the second wasn't. So the third must be the min. So pretty easy way to do it. Um, these aren't that bad. Anyway, try them out. 
and then move on. Hopefully, the thing I don't like about these examples is they seem to have only used and and they use the not, but I didn't I didn't see a need for the or yet, and it would be nice to have some or. But hopefully, in the next section, we're going to have some more of those. All right, folks, give it a whirl.